Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Dr. Angelica Maria Koch with the educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. I hope you're all okay out there. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late with my videos, but here on mind I had a really intense time which, may I say, left me physically and emotionally traumatized. It all had to do that I had no water supply and in a very short time I had to drill a new well. It required all my attention, lots of contractors, um, an astronomical high bill on my table, an ocean of emotions, and the weather was in the high 80s, so it was super hot, and I didn't have water for nearly two weeks. So it was quite intense. And during this time, patients walked in my practice also experienced trauma. One arrived first at a car accident, which involved casualties. Another one, a well-known resident in our small town, his life was cut short quite tragically and it all affected us. So how can we heal this complex situation called trauma with natural and effective therapeutic tools? Now please be aware that this short video only can serve as a sign of hope and really covers only the tip of the iceberg here, but it is a start because I want you to feel and experience that there can be a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, before we dive into this emotionally charged topic, I'm delighted to announce that today, yes, today, is the launch of my eight-week online course called Integrated Mental Health, the Science of Body Ecology. I'll give you a little bit info about it. This course facilitates the student, present and future healthcare um, practitioners as well as mental health professionals such as psychiatrists, psychologists, clinical social worker, marriage and family therapist, mental health counselor and nurse practitioner who want to further develop their skills in the mental health niche with an understanding of holistic concepts uh, of integrated mental health. Now with an approach to holistic health, integrated mental health is um, a rapidly emerging paradigm that combines traditional medicine, psychotherapy and evidence-based complementary and alternative therapies. Advances in the understanding of the causes of mental illness have important implications for therapeutic uses in the treatment of depression, like anxiety, Alzheimer's disease, ADHD, autism, bipolar, and many more mental health challenges. So students gain knowledge and practice to support a whole body approach to mental health disorders, utilizing multiple fields of medicine and nutritional sciences. So here you will explore uh, the understanding between mind and brain and the gut-brain connection, the microbiome, how important it is, as well as some super effective Kundalini Yoga uh, asanas and practices. It's a whole body approach. To register for this course, go to my website medicanova.net at the online academy. It's $150, so it's really affordable. And to stay updated with more ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and family. And yeah, if you want to explore more online courses about first aid homeopathy, quantum healing, again, go to my website, medicanova.net at the online academy. And if you're interested in a personal health consultation, either for yourself or your children, contact me at health at medicanova.net. Sometimes trauma can haunt a person after experience one or more difficult, painful events affecting their ability to live a normal daily life. Now, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, 
Some of the most common symptoms include physical symptoms such as anxiety, right? including racing heart, sweating, inability to think clearly. It certainly happened to me. Nightmares or strange dreams, insomnia, you worry a lot, a difficulty getting enough rest. Having frightening thoughts that appear to come out of nowhere or last for several hours like flashbacks. Feeling very anxious when encountering images, words, objects or situations that are reminders of the traumatic event. Like my patients who arrived first at this car accident, her statement is now saying, I'm afraid of everything except making dinner. So that's, you know, that's the impact what she's dealing with now. And because she was the first at the scene now, she feels like, oh my God, it could have been me, right? And every time, uh, the car accident happened very close where she lives, so every day she has to pass by and really it stirs up this memory again. Some start avoiding talking to everybody else about the thoughts and the feelings related to this event. There can be a refusal to do certain things or making changes in one's personal routine, you know, in order to avoid certain triggers like driving or going on vacation or being even in relationships. People can start to become very tense, right, edgy and easily startled. The others can become very angry, even violent to family members and strangers. Often there's a difficulty having a normal job, completing tasks due to lack of concentration, learning and remembering new and old information. Others, particularly if they're exposed to high level stress, um, there are physical symptoms like digestive issues, bloatedness, irritable bowel syndrome is totally you know, on the top of the list here, lack of appetite, um, even skin irritation, you maybe have eczema, it only happens once a year and suddenly it's there all the time. Higher risk of substance abuse, you know, more medication, more painkillers or more alcohol than drug. Needless to say, it ends up in depression, ongoing negative thoughts about oneself, about the state of the world, there can be distorted feelings of guilt and shame, social isolation, they feel misunderstood, not being heard, and just a lack of motivation in general. Children who suffer from you know, PTSD, but I don't want to say it in this video because it's really just um, an informative video about traumatic events. I don't want to label it as PTSD. Uh, deal with symptoms like inability to open up. Um, they have trouble sleeping. Often I see bedwetting, doesn't matter what age. They can be very clingy to their caregivers. Teens sometimes become aggressive, right? really disrespectful to their teachers and authority figures. But have compassion here because what you see is not who they are. You know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and it's just a defensive mechanism. Other neurological and biochemical changes have also been shown to take place in brains and bodies of those with PTSD, including in the limbic system, which is the primal emotional center of the brain. Studies suggest that three of the primary areas impacted by trauma are the amygdala, the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Changes in the brain following traumatic events can even be similar to types of neurological changes seen in patients with brain injuries, right, due to impact, accidents, etc. That's quite a, a astounding uh, finding here. So MRR brain scans clearly show that images of past trauma activate the right hemisphere of the brain and deactivate the left side. Now the two halves of the brain do speak different languages, so to speak. The right is considered more intuitive, emotional, visual, spatial and tactual. The left side is more related to linguistic, sequential and analytical 
aspects. And the right brain is also the first one which develops in the womb. So it's responsible for non-verbal communication between mothers and infants. It's interesting that trauma, you know, brings that side up but reduces the left side, which is more, you know, related to facts, statistics and, um, yeah, just being able to even express it. So, what are the natural treatments here? Let's start with Dr. Axe's list, which I like, um, which of course starts with therapy and counseling. Various types of psychotherapy, talk therapy are used to help people overcome trauma. And the type of therapy, of course, depends on the situation and access to professional care. Desensitization and exposure to fears. In addition to common types of talk therapy, several forms of exposure therapy are used uh, to desensitize patients to perceive threats, relieve stress and help them to face fears directly. As I said, I'm not um, an expert here and I can only share with you the information. But what I really know is that yoga and meditation is very helpful here. In fact, it has shown that yoga um, can change the brain by helping to increase the happy neurotransmitters. And we talk about serotonin here, dopamine, endorphins, even oxytocin to reduce the effects of the stress and helping to improve coping mechanisms for negative feelings as well, you know, many more situations. Research suggests that another reason that yoga and other forms of mind-body practices work so well for reducing uh, traumatic symptoms uh, or caused by PTSD is because they positively impact the nervous system. And that's what we really want to uh, focus on here. Right? When you experience a traumatic event, it means your nervous system is super activated and it really needs help. Now this is because they change chemical signals sent by the vagus nerves uh, back to the brain. And the vagus nerve, which is right here, it uh, connects our digestive system with the brain as a large bundle of fibers that connects the brain with many internal organs. Researchers believe that um, about 80% even of the fibers that make up the vagus nerve run from the body into the brain. So it's very important. Studies also have found that we can directly influence the type of hormonal and chemical signals sent from the body to the brain. And that's just a mind-blowing breakthrough, so to say. It means signaling to the brain um, if we should feel aroused versus relaxed, depending on how we manipulate our body. So you have power here. There's also lots of emerging data coming forward supporting mindfulness and meditation as an effective treatment approach due to how neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change itself based on repetition and focused attention, can improve neurological processes and brain structures. Therefore, reduce activity of the amygdala, which is the fear center, help with emotions regulation and improve integration of the right and left hemisphere of the brain. So we want to create harmony again, right, of your brain. And um, really, I'm a big fan of Kundalini Yoga Kriya called Sat Nam. And you maybe want to check out on YouTube, um, Ann Novak, a fantastic Kundalini Yoga practitioner. Um, and what I recommend is uh, the Kriya or the Asana or the practice called Sat Nam means your true identity really works well. You know, you only need to take 3 or 11 minutes a day, um, but it really has um, that access to your nervous system, stabilizing your brain functions, and so you can deal with difficult times in your life. Because health, what does health mean? It means the ability to adapt to environmental changes right, in a more flow state. That's really what health is. 
So changes in brain structure, that's what we want. Deregulation of the brain areas associated with emotional regulation and memory, memory is a key contributor to the symptoms associated with PTSD and anxiety in general. This is an addition to the overactivity of the fear center, the amygdala. Mindfulness reverses these patterns by increasing prefrontal and hippocampal activity and toning down the amygdala, toning down your fear center. Of course, social and family support is very important. Self-care, stress management, you know, really during this time, force yourself to exercise, move your body, get enough sleep, have a hot bath, um, go out in nature, put your feet on grass, you know, feel Mother Earth. Um, be, also become more knowledgeable, right? If you allow yourself, just go online, study a little bit, you know, speak with a professional and so on. But now I want to go into supplements and remedies. So next to aromatherapy, you can put some lavender essential oil in your hot bath. I would say bath flower remedy, rescue remedy is very important. You all get that at your local health food store. Five to seven drops in a glass of water throughout the day or straight on your tongue. Either way will work. I would also say get yourself a vitamin B complex supplement because it sort of calms down the nervous system, because that's what we want to focus on. But here I really want to say homeopathic remedies. Again, I only want to stress or share with you simple remedies you can get in your local health food store, nothing too complicated. But if I wouldn't have had them, right, these emergency remedies, I would have had a very, very much more difficult time and um, they were my best friends right now over the last three weeks. So homeopathy can treat shock, trauma and grief particularly very effectively. We all know that severe physical pain can cause an emotional response and our system can also respond in reverse. When we experience strong emotions such as overwhelming fear or grief, our system can respond rapidly and or biochemically to express or discharge the intensity of that emotion by feeling even faint, right? You feel nausea, you feel weak, you definitely feel exhausted. I mean, I felt like as if a truck just, you know, just completely demolished me. You know, that was the feeling. I felt like I feel demolished. So. We often treat patients suffering years of chronic illness which began after traumatic events. Divorce, death of a loved one, um, even severe fright in this case. Sometimes it can even begin after something that seemed relatively simple, especially in children like moving house or a new school or a um, child's best friend moving away, all of that. So treating acute emotional distress is very important as it helps prevent an individual internalizing their emotions and co-expressing it on other levels leading to health problems later on. Now the following remedies are only a selection of those often needed in the aftermath of a bad shock. As I said, there aren't the only remedies, but for this purpose of this video, I want to keep it simple. It's like, like a little snapshot to it, specifically related to trauma. Whatever remedy you choose, I want to start with that you go to your health food store and purchase the biochemic homeopathic cell or tissue salt called Califos. It's a low potency, it comes with a number 6x, which just gives you um, the idea of the strengths. It's very low. And for adults, I want you to take four tablets morning and evening, uh, morning and evening, at least for a month, you know, to calm down the nervous system. It even says on the label, it works for nervous exhaustion. Whatever you do, just take it. It's very good. 
I want to start with two major remedies, again available in your health food store called Aconite 30 and Arnica 200. Now, the first two remedies to think of for shock, definitely Aconite and Arnica. Now, Aconite is immediately recognizable because people who need it are visibly distressed, right? They look frightened. Like, for example, I, I took this right away, one tablet every hour for a whole day. So it started off the mouse had eaten an electrical wire in uh, next to the water pressure tank, right? And I fixed that, that didn't work. Then the well pump didn't work. Then uh, we pulled out the pump and it got stuck halfway through and we had to get a crane and they couldn't get it out and so on. Anyway, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, it turned out a $15,000 bill. <laughs> so my face became more and more stoic. I was more and more frozen. I just went from bad to worse. That's aconite. That's the state of frozenness, being anxious, being totally in fear. And so the symptoms that stand out are trembling. I mean, I didn't have fear of death, but some people can have this feeling like, oh my God, I think I'm gonna die, right? This kind of thing. This fear can surface immediately after bad shock and or surface at night after bad dream. They can suffer from panic attacks if the acute shock isn't dealt with. Again, I took Aconite 30, one tablet every hour, and it really got me through um, the heightened state of this intense experience because I had to make decisions, right? And you can't make decisions if you're in a state of total fear. Arnica 200, it's a higher potency here. I followed that up after Aconite, and it's by sharp contrast, those who knew Acuna, uh, Anika might seem superficially to be okay. You know, they say, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. And even they insist on it. And especially during daytime, if you ask them, are you okay? And they say, no. That would be a good remedy, it's say, if one has a car accident and you happen to go there and uh, you say, oh my God, what just happened here? Are you okay? And the person says, I'm fine, totally okay. That's not, right? They're in shock. Now, you don't see so much fear here, right? But this feeling of um, something has happened. And uh, even if they control themselves during the day, you know, the subconscious comes up during the night and then they have bad dreams, nightmares, keep them awake all night. Images of the shocking stresses haunt them at night rather than during their waking hours. I want to also mention a remedy called Stramonium here. Go and take a, a lower dose, 30 maybe. It's similar to Aconite. I use it a lot for children. Those who needed experience and re-experience fear and terror after bad shock. So it means terror. Now the level of intensity goes up. Aconite is more identifiable, two-dimensional shock and fear, right? And there can be trembling of the body. Stramonium can express a wider range of feelings. There can be hysteria, right? loud laughing, even rage, feeling of unreality. I remember a total Stramonium case. It was, I was invited to a wedding and I was the best man or the best woman and the, the bride at the altar was about to get married and she went into this stramonium uh, state. She was terrified basically and she ended up hysterically laughing. So the minister had to stop, everyone had to stop, we were trying to calm down the bride. I mean it was a really bad situation but she could have done very well with stramonium. So you see it in children often if they have a fear of the dark, they wake up screaming in terror at night, um, they don't recognize you, they maybe even have sleepwalking, um, they're unable to be fully awake 
but they're in terror and they can't recognize you. With my recent personal traumatic experience, I started with Aconite 30, followed then by Arnica, and then the whole thing came up with, uh, oh my God, I'm going to pay this bill, right? And so fear of money, fear of finances, anxiety, super worry. And I took the Remedy Asenicum album. 200, one tablet, three times a day for one day. And it really calmed down this worry. And I could find solutions. Now, there are many personality types when it comes to shock, to trauma. Others will maybe flake out, right? They can't deal with the situation at all. And they even feel dull and droopy. The remedy gelsemium comes to mind here. They have trouble even opening their eyes. They're completely depleted. People experience loss alongside the shock, but they can't cry. They become shaky and drowsy. Typical, the shock comes in the form of bad news. In that category, when people flake out, there's another remedy called phosphoric acid. Again, here you need your healthcare practitioner, but I just mention it. Often, they, often phosphoric acid gets confused with gelsemium, and it's indicated when they receive bad news, especially when it comes by phone or letter, rather than by experience it first had. Like, if you would be one of these personalities and you get dumped by your boyfriend by a text, for example, this kind of way, right? you say, oh my God, and then you end up listless, low motivation, you know, you feel like, oh my God, you have no strength anymore, your body is tired, exhausted, and you sink into apathy, right, apathy of life, and you don't even want to talk anymore. Although these people, you know, they would actually um, get up and carry up their responsibilities for their task, but internally they feel completely um, listless and tired. Phosphoric acid is a fantastic remedy here. Needless to say, I want to mention our two main remedies, which I um, shared with you so many times in previous videos, when it gets to grief and loss. Ignatia Mara, wonderful remedy for adults. If you can get a 200, that's wonderful, the potency, but often you just get Ignatia 31 tablet, maybe every two to three hours. I do this for one or two days. For children, less, you know, maybe three times a day for a day. But if you are in doubt, contact me at health at medicanova.net. A remedy indicated for people with loss who don't want to talk, who um, even want to be alone, to cry, but they resist all comforting. They can even have a sensation of a lump in the throat, which is a sign of, you know, the th throat chakra they can't express anymore. All from the emotion and the emotional tension of holding back their feelings. And when they finally break down and cry, it is with great big sobs. They just burst out. They may be even haunted by feelings of guilt and um, regret. You know, oh, I should have done more. You know, why did I miss that? And so on. The twin remedy of Ignatia of is called Natrum Moriaticum. And the way you differentiate the two is that Natrum Moriaticum is just deeper in their grief. They hold on much longer and they're the loners. They want to stay alone in their room and even then they have a hard time crying and only a few tears come out whereas Ignatia really sobs. You know, they're in buckets here. Um, yeah, they're much more withdrawn, much more reserved, but that would be a great remedy to think about, particularly among teenagers, you know, who hold in their emotions all the time. So I want to remind you for individual consultations, either for your children, loved ones or yourself, you can contact me at health at medicanova.net and as I said, I'm happy to help here. 
Personally speaking, without my emergency homeopathic remedies like Aconite, Anika and Asinicum album, indicated for my personal trauma, I would have had a really hard time getting over this recent life challenge and I can say it worked. That's why I'm making this video because I'm a living example here. I recently went through that and I can say, hey, I'm able to share that with you right here and now. So let's take a deep breath in and out and let's just flush it all out and I'm happy to take a shower again. So till next time, much love.